Jamaica. I told you fools to stop fucking with the Maki. Arab Nazi, blow holes in your Versace. This war's mega. With the arm, legger, legger. Been doing this since March 6 with Claw Mega. Gorilla, animal. Shout out to the real. Shout out to the fake. Shout out to that nosy bitch. You better stay in your place. Get in line, pump. Let's go. In the building. I'm, I'm oh, CEO Gold. I'm more highly dysfunctional. My man Smash Show. We got the legendary Queen's Own Tragedy on the joint. And um, if you're a hip hop head like we are, you know, this is definitely one of the best pens. I, I come in as a as a fan just of the culture when I come with my questions. So I want to get into right into intelligent hoodlum. You know what I mean? That feel like the start, the beginning for trash. Like who was the one that was like, yo, we gotta get him on. Cause it was good. I, I could go back peace, to peace, peace. before before it was before we knew CNN and all of that. I wanna talk about that tragedy first. Mm, okay. Intelligent Hulam. So who who was the first one that saw your talent and was like, yo, he's next? Um I would have to say my you mean industry wise or just period? as far as putting you on to 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 the people, but I'm, I would have to say I would have to say it was uh I would have to say it was MC Poet, Black Poet from my from Queensbridge. Okay, yeah, he like one of the first dudes to like really hear me, and um was like yo yo like you know what I'm saying you got it like just keep doing what you're doing or whatever, and I respected him, still respect him, but I had a lot of admiration for him, so I took that as as being golden and solid, so. That gave me a little spark, a little confidence. All right. Peace to so, poet, man. So fast forward, the first studio session now, as you gain the momentum to, be, to, you know, as far as being an industry rapper now, you're intelligent hoodlum, kind of kind of give us that walkthrough to, to now I'm in the lab, I'm about to drop records for people to actually hear. For me, like, I never really, you know what I'm saying, this, this off of no bullshit, like, I never really considered myself being in the industry. I didn't fit in the My first studio session is just like the studio session I had right now prior to getting on this interview. The only difference is I was a lot more nervous and I didn't know exactly what to do. But other than that, it's no different. You know what I'm saying? I go in with that same, same mentality. I go in like the kid I was and the kid I am to the man I am and the man I was. All the facts. So it's like, the only, and, and another difference was the uh, the standard that was around me when I started recording, obviously, with the group school and all, but it's, it's kind of the same to me. You know what I'm saying? Factuals. So your relationship with Nas at that time, or was there one yet at that time? And what specific time you mean? Meaning the intelligent hold on time where your first record is dropping, we just seen your video on Video Music Box that ever, that time. Um, I can't say I didn't really know Nas outside of the kid that was up in my window talking to my sister. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I didn't I didn't know him to be an MC at that time, but I knew of him because I, I would come in the crib and my sister be in the window. I'm like, who you talking to? And I look out the window and be him. Like, hey, fuck away from my window. You know how that goes. So, you know, right. that's my first. Uh, introduction to Nas, and then, like, when I found out that he could spit, I was like, oh, shit, I didn't even know this dude, you know, the rhyme and shit, but, like, he really had, he really knew, like, a lot of my history, because, obviously, you know, I was, I was out there and running around or whatever, but, like, he, he kind of was stealth for a long time, you know what I'm saying, and plus, at that time, he had that kind of personality anyway, he was more like, you know, laid back or whatever on his, on his aura, so, when I found out he could rhyme, it was actually, I was with, uh, I actually went, I was with my DJ Fatal, and we went to Lars Professor Crib. Okay. And we, Fatal brought Nas or whatever, so we all over there. And he had spit some shit, and I was like, all right, sound kind of nice. And, um, you know, that, that kept my, kept my eye on him, you know what I'm saying? I was aware, you know, I'm a swordsman, so anytime you see a dude who not a, you know, swinging sword, you're going to pay attention to him, like, yo, he, you know, he got potential. But at that time, he was still, uh, he was still raw in his, you know, in his stages of development. But um, I could hear little changes of influences, just like I'm sure, like when I came out, I had little changes of influences. If you pay attention, 
but I, I could see that he would uh, he would develop. So it was a it was a process meeting Nas and then you know seeing Nas evolve. Wow, that's that's probably that's probably so. One more my, one more last question for I take it away. I want to fast forward to T O N Y, right? Mm -hmm. So T O N Y, one of my I, when I DJ, I mean, River, this is one of my favorite records ever. Bit one of the hugest New York anthems. Wait, so wait, hold on, you a DJ? I did, I dabbled in DJ. I, I won't call myself a DJ. I'm more MC. All right, all right, all right, man. But I, I DJ at a time. Fuck what you did. But not for real. Like I, I'm biased to the music I played. It was always the era we from in New York, that early '90s era. It was always that. So, and of course, y'all was a soundtrack to that. So T O N Y, one mm -hmm. of the biggest records. Now going in, my understanding that that was a tragedy record, not a CNN record. Or do I have that wrong? No, T O N Y. Yeah. T O N Y was yeah nah it was a, it was a CNN record. It was a collective record, but. Uh... Actually, we'll, we'll, Doug Paradise was a tragedy record. True Confessions and and Calm Down kind of started off like that. But Team One Wild was always seeing his record. I just, you know, I came and filled in the uh, the energy. You know what I mean? For sure. So how so how that record come about? Like who had the beat first? Like yo, I gotta know how that actual record. It was it was it was like it was like you know around this time when. Uh, when you know dudes were like putting albums together, they had like that formulae of a template of what an album should sound like. Most you know, most dudes followed the same type of format. You know, they they wanted a street record, then they wanted a club record, and then they wanted a you know a, a, a radio record. You know what I'm saying? Then they wanted a you know they had they had basically they had you know categories that they would build and structure that album around. I don't care who he was. Everybody, everybody had that in the back of their mind. Even if they didn't set it out that way, after it was done, they was like, "Oh, that's a radio record. Oh, that's for the shorties." Like you know, that was the you know that was the guideline. That was the blueprint, the template. Right. So when we the the beat the um T O Y beat came across, it was like, "Yo, hold on, this shit you can't really. This shit is just some other out of orbit shit. Like right. it's like real. The tempo is like who do that by the way." That's not Sheen Myrick from Bad Boy. Okay. Yeah, that's not Sheen Myrick from Bad Boy. So the tempo was like real, like boom, boom, ah, uh -huh, boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, you got the violins in there. So, like, upon hearing that beat, you know, I can't I can't say it was just me. We always like, yo, this shit, this shit is different. Like, the aura on this is, it's just special. Like, it, 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 it sums up. Or it sounded like a signature to to the movement, you know, we was moving in. And um later on I, I got uh it's funny, like if you listen to the track, you'll hear in the background, that was the additive, that was my, you know, my sofrito. But I was actually getting a fucking haircut and my barber was singing some blue magic shit. And I was like, yo, what you doing later? He's like, man, I was like, yo, come to the studio. So I am he, he passed away, rest in peace. I had my barber come through and sing that in the background. Wow. And then, and then me and me and somebody that was working with me at the time was like an assistant and all. We had ran into a violinist. So we wanted to bring out those sounds in there because you had sounds in there that that we felt were like real captivating, real, real magnetic. So we got a violinist to come up and basically bring out that arrangement that. <laughs> so we added on with that. You know, piece to uh, not see my, but we added little spices to that to bring it out. And I think that's like that was like kind of that essence and energy that made that joint, you know, hit different. That's what's up. I feel like you made niggas write their verse over after they heard yours or something. Did anything like that happen? Let, let, you know, let's be clear. Like, you know, I'm not, I ain't with the bullshit. I ain't with the romanticizing. I'm a, listen, I'm comfortable with me. I don't really got no disrespect. Like, you know what I mean? I'm gracious with myself, man. Like, I ain't into arguing over shit. You know, dudes, we did a little into this funny. I ain't with all that shit. I know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, be clear. Like, you know, I had I set a certain kind of standard. If you listen to dudes, dudes say it in so many words, you know, but you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we ease God out with the ego. You know what I'm saying? Easing God out. Well, shout out to you, man. I appreciate you giving me the time to answer those questions I've always wanted to ask you, man. Shout out to Trash, man. Peace to you, too. For real. So you knew that was a hit right off the bat? 
Nah, I can't say that. I just knew it was different. I just knew it was like, you know, I knew it was different. Like, I didn't hear that everywhere. Because, like, you know, you had the, uh, the Transvision of Glaciers of Ice, original man, possess the power, the hope, you know, the grand, break a break a pool. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that energy on that Glaciers of Ice was different all over. Yeah, that's it. hit you here. You know what I'm saying? That, like, when I heard that, I'll never forget me and my cousin, the girl Rafiq, we was listening to that, and I was like, yo, this shit sound like, like, like a war. Like, shit, like Indians about to run down on you and shit. He was like, well, I was just, this, the energy of that shit sound like a war, a war drum. And that particular joint was like a signature sound that came from somewhere else for me when I heard that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And while we was doing the um, war report, I didn't hear that. Yeah, until we heard uh, the Chihuahua What song was that on the list? Was that like, you got a list of songs. When, when, when did that come in? When you number one? Something you thought was the first single or what, and then you did that? Nah, I, honestly, I didn't I didn't even try to sum the album up like that. I just was laying. I was like, it's going to come. You know what I'm saying? I know it's going to come. Don't Don't try to like, I don't like, I don't like doing that shit, like trying to force some shit like, Right. Feeling pressure from the label, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. I ain't with that. So it's like we let it come and it came. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the real. Oh. Um, Shout out so, to the real. So let's take it back to the beginning. So uh -huh. tragedy, Queens. So how'd you grow up, man? I know you grew up in the streets. I know you came from a troubled background, just like myself. And you know we got a lot of similarities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's talk yeah. about that before uh, intelligent you know, hoopin' came about. I mean, like, Intelligent Hoodlum came about for me going up north when I was 16 when I went to Elmira. And uh, I read a book, mm. uh, Autobiography of Malcolm X by Alex Haley. And when I read that book, I was like, oh, you know, I related, obviously, to Malcolm's story as he related to our story. You know what I'm saying? He was us. He was him. And I, I was so, I was inspired by Malcolm because he taught himself. Now, for me coming up, I don't know what your physical degree is, your age. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm power knowledge, so it's like my, that's my physical degree. So the era I came up in was a little different. Like it wasn't cool to be a smart dude. Like when I was real young, it wasn't cool to be articulate. You know what I'm saying? You actually got you, know, you got targeted because if you talk, you know, how, you know, some of us with the, with the dis ease mentally. Oh, you trying to talk white because you're articulate, or you have a, a more vast vernacular than they have. You trying to be something? Why you got to try to be that? You on a different page with your shit. You know what I mean? So when I would when I would go through the channels of life and shit, I would notice that. So you come out on the block and you see dudes playing ball in the sports. I suck at sports. Suck at ball. My mom's better than me in basketball. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't really good at sports. You know what I'm saying? And the other option was selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? Or stick ups. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I went the stick up way because I had the patience to sell drugs. I figured I let them sell it and I take it from them. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't, I was like I said, I wasn't nice and poor, cool with boxing. But when I heard hip hop, I, I felt comfortable with a voice. Like when I heard Melly Mel and Message, I was like, oh shit! Like, like if I said some shit, if I rhyme, I would say some shit like that. And I'm a little dude. Like the mm -hmm. child born with no state of mind, blind to the wit. Like that shit just touched me different. All the party shit was cool. I loved all that shit, all the breaks. But that type of shit right there, it spoke somewhere in me. Like, I knew that I would come with a different type of message and shit. So, you know, when I went up north, and uh, like I said, I was 16, when I went up north, and uh, I read that book by, by Malcolm X, everything started coming together, as as opposed to when... Before I went, you know, Marley was like, yo, just be patient. We're going to get the deal. Be patient. But it's hard to stay focused when you're hungry and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I know, I know the feeling. And you got to feed your brothers and sisters. And I'm the oldest. I'm like 14, 15. You know, I tried to chill for a year. And um, by the time I was going on 16, that's when I got back. And when I went up north, a couple months later, dude was like, yo, shorty, you, you say your name Chaddy? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you ain't tragedy. Tragedy's down with these niggas, and he passed the tape down, and it was, it was fucking, it was Juice Crew and, and Kane, and, and I was like, oh shit, they fucking made it. You know what I'm saying? They really did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, as a, as a, that was like a real blow to me because 
I was like, damn, like I gave this shit so much, man. Like, why, you know, why the fuck I'm in here? Like, mm -hmm. I know the feeling. Why he couldn't look out for me and just all he had to do was give me no. And it wasn't like I just, I just needed to eat, like really eat, not, not you know what I'm saying. I do, yo, know, I gotta eat. Nah, it wasn't. I wasn't trying to get up to stunt. I was really doing shit to eat, <laughs> like feed myself. So, you know, I ain't gonna mm. fuck like I was some wild little, you know what I'm saying, baby fucking, you know, fucking fifty cent. You know what I'm saying? Or like I was booking shit, but I wasn't. You know what I mean? Mm. But I was doing it for the sake of survival. I wasn't doing it because Flux. I was doing it for a cause. You know what I'm saying? And mm. and that's how my shit, you know, that's how I got into the streets initially. Later on, it became something different. You know, you get comfortable out there. You get consent. And, you know, you know how that go. But so caused my music to take a backseat every time. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it hurt in the sense that of my development. Not just for my career, but even in life, you know what I'm saying? And I, I always make that known because it's not something I'm ashamed of, but it's not something I'm actually proud of either. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and it's funny when people like, I, I, I love to be appreciated for my art and my lyrics because I basically like slip my wrist and bleed on the track. Mm. And I, I, yeah. I try to give a piece of me in, in every joint I do. But it was always a cost for that, you know what I'm saying? Fortunately now, you know, my life's a lot better in terms of, you know, having that sword over your head and all that, living that type of life, one foot in and one foot out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm on a different orbit right now because of those, you know, journeys I took in mm -hmm. terms of prison, in terms of the street, you know, just getting caught up in a lot of shit. And I'm not, you know what I'm saying? It's not a little preaching shit because I've always been conscious and I always try to give the right food, even when I made street shit. If you listen, I'm not necessarily glorifying it in that sense. I'm telling you the horrors and what it costs me. I'm just doing it <laughs> creatively. You know what I'm saying? So when we ask, like, yo, how intelligent hoodlum come about? I was always an intelligent hoodlum. You're an intelligent hoodlum. Malcolm was intelligent hoodlum. He <laughs> sparked the theme of the concept for me to articulate it in the title, but we were always intelligent hoodlum. We always educated ourselves when we had to. We were always autodidacts. We was always that, always articulate. You know what I'm saying? So Intelligent Hullum as a title came about at that time, but we all intelligent Hullums. What was right. the what was the decision to roll with that though? At first, at first it was it was a concept. I mean, you had PE, you had um, you had PE, you had Karis One, you had different groups coming out conscious, you know, making making impactful music in 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 the knowledge sense and. You know, Molly asked me, what did I want to call my album? I was like, oh, I want to call Intelligent Hullum. It was all inspiration. It was all motive, you know, it was all, I was all, it was, I was inspired at a time in my life, you know, within the times. You know what I'm saying? I'm just coming home. Before I went away, you know, I was ignorant. I thought all niggas sold drugs, fuck girls, and shot at niggas, and whatever. Whatever. I didn't mm -hmm. even have a clue. Of, or or inclination of the iconic leaders, influential revolutionists and, and torchbearers that I stood on their shoulders. Like I had no knowledge of this until I was incarcerated, until I started delving into books and, you know, different information. So now when I come home, I'm like, oh shit, like, yo, we got people that fought for us. Motherfuckers look down for each other like that. We had that type of love. I, I never, I swear, I never knew nothing about that. I no, only I know the feeling. Only was familiar with the name Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. That's as far as it went. You know what I'm saying? And to come home to this newfound information, you know, I'm passionate. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a true artist. So I took it to the extreme. I was like, yo, I got locked up. I committed a crime. I got locked up. They sent me to prison. You know, I booked something. I had to pay, I got caught, I had to pay that price to society and within the system, within Leviathan's Beast. And I, I took that, I accepted that, you know what I'm saying? Then if I'm, if my hands come into crime via my action, my ways, my my lack of morality for society or whatever, and the respect for law, I go and I get caught, I gotta serve time, I have to pay a debt. So in my mind, I was like, yo, so for the nation, the government that's doing wrong, who the fuck pays for that? Mm. 
the present. Right. If if laws can be applied on this microcosm, on this micro perspective, on this side of the table, doesn't it apply on the other side of the table? That's what that's it's my true. mind. It's true. So I took I took it to the extreme. It was like, yo, fuck it, where's him? I pay mm -hmm. mine, you gotta pay yours. How many how many mothers and sisters we know unjustly are paying? And some are paying, you know, for what they cause. You know, they gain their justice. But it seems like they never pay on that side of life. We just get, you know, we just have to fit the bill. So when I came home, I wanted to make songs in that vein. And I, you know, I'm not, I don't regret it. I love it because when I listen to it, I'm like, damn, look at young man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I respect my heart and my courage to do that. Especially going from a street kid, like, rhyming like, liver cool, but wet. All the drink is more wet. Like, I'm 13 rhyming like that. So mm -hmm. now for me, it was a, it was a challenge to rhyme like that because all my street dudes like, man, what are you talking about? And I'm like, nah, it's nah, son. Like, look at this. Like, you don't see this? Like, it felt, it was so profound to me because my eyes was closed. So now my eyes are open and I can't not talk about it. I'm still the same way. I just play it a different different way, approach it a different way. It tells you a little. Shout out to the real. But listen, you speak about not knowing these things, and we talk about the kids right now. Do you think they know these things? Do you think they even um, being taught these things? You talk about how it came out and wide in your brain when you I came think, out of jail. I think. I think. Um, I think some of the kids may get glimpses of it, you know. But I think for the most part, they don't see the relevancy of it. Mm. So they don't, huh? Right. Yeah, they, they don't find it necessary. They don't find it necessary. It doesn't, it, they don't see how it relates to them or their situation. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't, I feel for them too because it's like that's, that's that food they need. They don't understand, you know, the, the, uh, the connection and the, uh, the nutrients that's in there for them because they're detached from that in a sense. But then again, if you look at, you know, on the, on the, on the massive holes, like, they're detached even more just based on the times, man. You know, like, there were times you went outside, you played, you had physical interaction, you know, you had a certain level of communication that stimulated, you know what I'm saying? Right. Your brain and, and different connections. Hold on a second. I'm still with you. Different connections that help you relate to your fellow man, family, or whatever. And it's like, now that's, um, pardon me, now that's gradually becoming null and void. You know what I'm saying? You don't you go around, you don't really see kids outside no more. You know what I'm saying? You don't see uh you see more of an isolation. So that 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 helps to increase that detachment. And so that becomes the the pattern. That becomes the norm to be isolated and be set off and away. You know what I'm saying? When you're away, you feel no connection to it. It's just like when, you know, young black boys get shot by police. If we're deemed as animals that means we're killable. So if the police shoot you down in the street, it's socially acceptable. Mm. Because there's no connection to that human being as far as society or white society or or on a whole white society is concerned. And it's the same thing in a sense with our with our young people. They don't feel any connection. It's that's why it's easy. Like you can't go put on a mask, grab the blicky, and run down and, and, and pop a motherfucker that you call him beloved. <clears throat> Yeah, you only doing that to someone you like, oh, fuck that nigga. And that nigga's you, so you don't give a fuck. That, you say, I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, that inner reflection is, is, is that's deep. It's just crazy. No, you it's, wicked. Wicked. it's very deep. For all my people out there, so you get out of jail. Marley pulls up on you and what? I didn't write a rhyme in jail. Mm hmm Marley fucking, uh, he pulls up on me. When I left, Marley had a fucking burgundy bullshit cougar. Mm -hmm. When I came home, he got the cherry red 525, the beige interior. So he pulls up on me in the head. I'm like, yo, what's up? I lean in the car. I'm like, yo, what's up? First thing I'm thinking, like, yo, you got some bread for me? Like, what <laughs> mean, what's up, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just touched down. Your dude's just eating, man. Yo, man, he's eating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to show me some type of honorarium, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But as I lean in the car, 
Like new leather will make you just get creative. Mm -hmm. When I smelled that new leather, I was like, damn, that shit smell nice. <laughs> he was like, yo, you writing? I was like, hell yeah, man. <laughs> I was lying through my teeth. I ain't write shit. I gave up. I was bitter. I tried to come home and join the Air Force. Mm. And they wouldn't take me. You know what I'm saying? If they would have took me, I don't even think I would have ever fucking made a record. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so I lied. I was like, yeah. So he was like, yo, I got the crib upstate. I'm like, oh, you're upstate now. You know what I'm saying? It's in Spring Valley, by the way. Yeah. So hold like, up, man. So okay. I don't want him to say that, man. So he's like, yo, I got the crib upstate. Come up, you can share whatever I ask. So I wound up going up there. You know, he got the little mini mansion and shit. So I'm like, oh, it's a you know, fucking nice space in the yard and shit like that. I'm like, man, this shit is peaceful. Like, I get a peace of mind. So I started writing. He'd go out in the day or whatever, go do his thing, run around. By the time he came out, I got three joints done. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just started going in. But I got to say this. I would have never even got back into it if it wasn't for DJ Fatal. I met Fatal. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, what's up? I went to a G-Rap show. And um, I kind of stayed off. Everybody was like, around G, you know, Juice Crew. But I ain't even going around them because I felt they wasn't treating me funny as much as I was feeling funny because I felt like if they treat me funny. You feel me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't going to do the fact, yo, he's now, you know, we on and... So I was like, I stayed at a distance. So Fatal had pulled up on me. He was like, yo, you tragedy? And I was like, I ain't think nobody even fucking knew me. I didn't have my picture on the cover. I was like one of the only ones that nobody knew what I looked like. They just knew the record, Live Motivated Rebels here. But mm. nobody knew what I looked like because I never stood around for press. I was mm. in the cages. So Fatal was like, yo, uh, are you tragedy? I'm like, yeah. Oh, shit, you know me? So he's like, yeah. <laughs> But I was, so he's like, uh, yo, when you, you, I know you just came home, whatever, yo, the streets was waiting for you. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, he's like, yo, you, you gonna get back in the studio? I was like, nah, I ain't fucking with this shit no more. He's like, what? You bugging, like. And I was like, you know, I'll never forget, he was like, he was like, yo, yo, come with me after the show. So we got in his little car and shit. And um, we was like in, in by Columbus Circle, a little, little up from Midtown, and we drove to 125th Street. And remember back in the days where on 125 they had a backdrop like with the Wendy and she shit, you take a flick in front of that and all that. Um, yeah, yeah. So when we pull up and shit, he slows down. And right in between the Apollo and that fucking cultural shop right there, he said, look. And it was a backdrop. And it said, live motivator. Didn't have my face. But it had like a fluorescent, hot, hot, pink looking back. But in black letters, it said, live motivator. And I was like, Shit, and that little sim that simple ass shit that's nothing to somebody, but I'm hip hop, and to me, I was like, Oh, shit. I got a backdrop, like that was a big deal to me. And that's that, shit, that shit like resonated something in my core. And then he was like, Yo, you still don't want to make records? And I was like, Nah, but I did, but I didn't <laughs> say it. But I was, I was like, But if I do, I promise I'll make you my DJ. So obviously, I got back into it and I made him my DJ. And mm -hmm. I got that. He's an asshole now, but I got to thank you for that at the time because. Well, who your DJ? Huh? Who's the asshole? Fatal, DJ Fatal. Oh, yeah. yeah He's yeah. an asshole in a good I love way. Him. That's my in a bad way. We, we grew up. I knew him like for almost 35 years. Mm -hmm. But um, like he gave me a piece of me back. You know, they say your true comrade sing your song back to you when you forget it. And that's mm -hmm. what he did for me. So I'm always grateful for that right there, you know what I mean? Mm hmm What's so, up? So that fatal. Between that, when did you drop Black and Proud? Between all that. Well, excuse that me. Yeah, yeah, I got caught me. I don't want to be rude, but I was fucking recording and working all day. I didn't mean to yawn in your face. But Black and Proud came off the Intelligent Hulum album. So when I came home, I did the Intelligent Hulum album. That was the first, you know, like my first commercial release. Then I kind of fell back for a little while. Things was going on between me and Molly, business wild situation. I don't want to get too much into that. It's, everybody knows, it's no secret. And I was started, I was looking to seek my own independence. I don't want my own situation. I felt like I was ready for it. So uh, me and Molly had a part in the ways. And, you know, that was like the lead single off that album. And followed, it followed up with Back to Reality and The Western President. 
but Black and Proud was the lead single off that first Intelligent Hoodlum album. And, you know, mm. like I said, after that album, me and Molly started going through situations or whatever, differences of opinion, you know how it go. And I started breaking away from that and, and you know, wanting to just wanting to just have my own and find my own. So Black and Proud was, to be honest, like Black and Proud was, I didn't even know Intelligent Hoodlum was produced so much by a large professor. Mm. You know, I'm, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Molly didn't have a major input on the album he did musically, sonically, but large professor had, uh, 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 he was a factor in terms of the production and the musical direction as well, and I didn't even know it. You know, this shit you find out, and this is my album, supposedly, you know what I'm saying? You understand? Right. So, like, that's that's very, mm -hmm. to me, that's like, that's like, that's like you having a child with a chick. He didn't even know he was having sex with her. <laughs> like that's my child. Mm. But you know, I didn't. I didn't even understand. So the more you know, I went on. The more my eyes were gonna open up and and learn and see. And that's why when I made Saga of a Hoodlum, it didn't have. I mean, it had it had more Billboard chart hits than uh, the original Intelligent Hoodlum, but it didn't have the same impact in terms of like the streets that I would have wanted and that I seen because it didn't because you know I I, I was in it and then like I said me and Molly was parting ways and so I was gradually just trying to get out of the situation you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying and um from Black and Proud and the Intelligent Hoodlum album to Saga of the Hoodlum it's basically that was me transitioning or segueing into my own shit from there but for the record, I'm going to say this, Intelligent Hoodlum was never my name, though. It was mm. just the type of the album. Oh. And, you know, mm. but I was on a and m and a and had Luther Vandross and Barry White and uh, Herb Albert and Bob James and Jimmy Jam, Janie Jackson. They had big mega stars. And here you got this young kid who's a rapper. And, you know, they basically took control over the marketing and over you know, the the uh basically the translation to the public of what I represented because they saw a gimmick and they ran with it marketing wise. But Intelligent Hunter was never my name. I mean it was always tragedy. Mm. So do you feel embraced by the music industry? <sighs> when you say the music industry, like what do you mean? Like the business, the Labels, executives, like we the labels, executives, everything. Because you did so much, you did so much. Do you feel like you know you get all the credit you deserve? That I'm gonna tell you something, bro. Like, but but I I, I come from like I come from a, the struggle, man. I come from from making myself out of you know when there was nothing there to, to make. You know what I'm saying? Like just the dream and just you know, you get caught up in you get caught up in the feedback from this industry, bro. Like that's the that's the, that could be to your detriment. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I was in a, I was in an interview on Dream Champs and they had Conway on there. To whom, you know, I I appreciate his skill and his approach to the game. And, you know, they told him he was a legend. And I didn't I wasn't trying to, you know, devalue him when I said this and I was like, You're not a legend yet. And I didn't feel competitive in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, I'll be on some other shit, but I, I was like, you shouldn't jack that because you got more to do. And once you jack that, it's like you slowly stop living because you feel in, in some way in your subconscious that you made it already. And you should, mm -hmm. that, that's a detriment to everybody. The illest dudes always was the ones who didn't realize how ill they was. Mm -hmm. So it could be, you know, it could be, it can be a bit challenging sometimes. And you're like, yo, you fuck, you know, are you not in this day? Like, you see the shit I'm giving you? Like, no. But I learned to appreciate it because it just keep me hungry. Like, when I look at other dudes from my era who came at the same time, and they just sound out of date. They don't sound hungry. Their energy's going. They don't even got no, they ain't got no style. They all resolved. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't even feel like I feel young. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I, I, I want to, you know, I want to 
put that to, you know, the spirit of competition, like feeling like I always got to come at this shit. And I think I'm always going to feel that way. So I thank the industry for doing that. So, so tell me about how CNN comes about. You executive producer. For me, I thought that was your group at one time. How did all they, that come I mean, about? They, they, they was, and or I think they was, and you know that you know that was just a situation because at first, initially, it wasn't. We didn't set out to. Well, at least I didn't set out to make the group. It was really about poem. But he kept telling me, you know, about his, yo, my man, or whatever. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, I want my man to be down or whatever. And I was like, yo, just all right, folks. But he was like, yo, when he come home. But I'm like, yo, just focus on you right now. Your man's not even here. I ain't, I ain't even hear him. So we went and made a record called, um, I had a producer under me who I had bought some equipment for him and, you know, started like, you know, kind of like mentoring him and shit. And his name was Ayatollah. And I was like, yo, we went to Ayatollah's crib and I was like, yo, I want you to sample this um M two mate record. Remember uh Sugar Free and uh, we actually did Granddaddy that. you you do that? Use that before? Yeah, we actually did that. We actually did that. Um yeah, he used it back in the days. Mm -hmm. We used it obviously more recently, Pone is a lot younger. So we actually did that with um and we put the chick on the hook and just get the cream. It's the only ride. So, you know, Pone killed this shit or whatever. And um, I had him, you know, basically carving out his own lane, doing his own single joints. When Nori came home, we went to go meet him at the train station. I'm like, yo, this motherfucker? Because I had knew Nori. I knew Nori before I knew Pone because his sister, India, peace to India, she, uh, she used to see me coming through with the Jolla beer on the crown and all that. She used to be like, yo, you seem positive. Man, I like the way you talk. She was like, can you please talk to my little brother? So I'm like, all right, you meet the little fella and shit. So I meet Nori. He's man little at the time. I'm like, yeah, try to spark him. He's like, man, fuck that. And I was like, oh, this. <laughs> I was like, he remind. I was like, I was like, he remind me of me when I was his age. And I was like, right now he's not ready because when somebody try to talk that shit to me at that age, I would spit on him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I ain't gonna let this little dude violate. But I feel like smacking fire to me, just little bastard. You know what I'm saying? So now when I see him, we come home like, yo, see, like, yo, what up? So we start vibing and the rest, you know, the rest is legacy. Mm -hmm. So right. so you meet him and you just automatically say y'all going to be seeing it? No, it, it was more like, you know, we going in and I hear him. So I'm like, oh, his style was, his style was real unorthodox. His style was real different. So I was like, oh, you know what? I like that. It's a contrast. Poems well smooth. He was mad, aggressive, offbeat, unorthodox. I like the contrast. I like the, you know, I like the polarity. You know what I'm saying? And I felt together it could, it could resonate a, a, a totally different sound for QB because if you listen to Havoc and P, they kind of, you know, kind of matched each other sonically. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, and and cadence wise to a degree, and then you know you know, had Nas obviously, and Nas was a lot more smoother and methodic. You know what I'm saying, but with them it's like you know I felt an aggressive energy, and I'm on I'm I'm I'm, I'm aggressive. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. so and and I'm passionate. So I was like, yo, I like this energy, like you know what I'm saying. So we started vibing, and you know different things was going on in the game. You had you know. Everybody was on their mob shit, and I was like, I'm not fucking with that because I watched the movie and it was like, yo, get the drugs to the blacks and the, and the Spanish, let them lose their soul. So I was like, I will never take on another mob because like that, like I ain't fucking with that. So I ventured east, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then we, we started to develop that and run with that. I was at the time I was I was I, you know I was my pops was Muslim, my step pops was Muslim, so I was familiar with that side of things. And, you know, I went through that school of thought, I should say. And, you know, but as I started coming into my own, I was like, you know, I took on a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? And I knowledge, I knowledge God, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, um, all of that, you know, all that is infused in the music. And, you know, it came out and it came across that way. You know what I mean? And it sounded all right. So it wasn't planned for you to be on eight, nine tracks. It wasn't planned like that. 
It's funny you say that. I'm going to chill out, though. But listen. I want you to chill out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's funny, man. It's funny. Give us the highly dysfunctional story. Uh huh. I mean, you know, it's it's right there in your face. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude's absent. So, in order to keep the motion, the wheels turning, I had the feeling I didn't even want to rhyme no more. I didn't want to mm. rhyme no more. I didn't even want to rhyme at all. I wasn't even writing no rhymes. I mm. only did that to fill in the spaces where it was born. I didn't mm. want to rhyme. I wanted to fall back and be an executive. I don't, I don't really like, you know what I'm saying? I, ain't, I don't really like attention like that. I don't like mm. that shit. Mm. I like, really? As a Leo? Words bomb. Oh, Leo's love like, attention. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me, let me <laughs> like it in my own space and time. You know what I'm saying? I like it when I like it, mm. sort of. Bit. Other than that, I like to be, I like to just fall back and be by myself, man. I don't like, you know, I don't got patience mm. for a lot of shit. And I, and I take things sometimes in a way that, you know, Maybe you know a little extreme because based on my lifestyle and things I've been through, I'm not necessarily thinking the dude is like, yo, let me get an autograph. I'm like, yo, is this some bad shit I did when I was 15? Because people don't remember the shit you're doing now. Mm -hmm. They think about shit I did when I was 16 years old. Yo, I know, know the feeling. That's Sometimes crazy. You can't to me. outlive that shit. <laughs> you can't I'm, I'm going. It. I'm I'm going to outlive it. It's them that's not going to outlive it. That's on yeah, them. them. I'm that's what I mean. It. Cause I, I'll get the fuck away from you. You know what I'm saying? But but it's deep. How you know you go and it's like, yo, remember, yo, bro, I was fucking. I was fucking thirty years ago, bro. Like you don't see what I'm doing now. You see the people I help now. You know what I'm saying? I understand. I was a wild kid. They like, blame that on the times, man. I didn't choose that shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the real. You preaching to the choir. I understand perfectly. Sometimes I be hearing shit. I'm like, leave it alone, man. Leave it alone, please. Yeah, man. They don't. They, you know, but. Teach his own, man. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's just not my thing. You know what I'm saying? So the album comes out. The shit is up. Everybody loves it. Y'all doing y'all thing. So how quickly do y'all start dissing each other? How fast does that happen? Honestly, man, it's like that was a gradual process. You know, that was a gradual process. And for me, it was like I waited till the end because I looked at them. I looked at dudes like my family. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In order for me to make something work at that time in, in such a way, I have to totally embrace it. So if I embrace it, nobody's telling me no at the radio. Nobody's telling me no at a show. I don't want to. I don't even understand that language mm -hmm. because this is my family. We, you know what I'm saying? I love it. I love these my people. Mm -hmm. I, I won't be denied. Like I'll I be, I be on that. And to this day, Flex has said that he'd be like, "Yo, this dude would not let me not play this record." You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You know, I'm Leo, I'm smooth with it too. So I'm not coming on no real. <sighs> but when you go pull up at the radio station, I'm 97. I'm in the parking lot where you park your car, and I'm just like, "Yo, what's up?" <laughs> and you pull up the next <laughs> man again because I want you to understand. I need you to play this record. If they don't, if the people don't like it, I gotta eat that. But you gotta get us a chance because I know the people won't like this shit. I'm speaking their language, they don't love this shit. Mm -hmm. And so it's like with that type of mentality going into it, I'm not gonna be denied. My people are not gonna be denied. And I'm serious about that. So that's the concept I had. And you know, things happen, man. Like things happen, man. We we put people in certain positions sometimes it's, you know, not fair to them. They're young. I'm I was young, I was coming out of the situation, but I just didn't particularly appreciate how it uh, the paint the picture was painted. Mm. I did not I did not take your publishing. In fact, I could have took way more publishing based on my input alone, mm. and didn't take it. In fact, I could have took most of a large portion of the first deal when dudes got picked up from Tommy from penalty to Tommy boy. And you know what I took? I ain't gonna lie. I took five thousand. I could have took two hundred thousand dollars. Mm. I swear, my mother. You know why? Cause you bit my hand. I don't want the money. My he lawyer, my lawyer Reggio Shea, at the time, who passed away, which was Combat Jack, 
I w- I never went on his show. He 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 wound up having one of the top podcasts. I never went on his show, even when my career was at a low, and I could have used the numbers. I wasn't going to show. I wasn't going to Norby show for a time, and I'm not you know shooting at him. Whatever I air it out and, and speak on it, B- because I'm not gonna do some if my heart ain't in it, bro. I can't. Mm. That's not how I'm made, yo. And I've tried. But it don't work for me. It hurts my face. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Did that hurt you to hear him coming at you after you you put all that heart, your blood, sweat, and tears, and all that? Of course. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? Then you start you start understanding energies, man. You start <clears throat> understanding forces. Like people have certain energies. You know what I'm saying? I got a certain energy. It could come, yo. He's, he's a dictator. Nah, I ain't a dictator. If you got to understand me, you would know I'm just, I feel strongly about this because I got burnt. And I'm on you like this because nobody was on me like that. Mm. I just don't to suffer. You don't understand that. Mm. You think I'm trying to control you. I'm not trying to control you. When I go, I'm gone. I don't want to be around. Mm. I'll dip up for a month. Nobody hear from me. Mm. I'm back in my crib because I, I can't. I poured in your cup already and nothing's getting poured in mine. So mm. I gotta go. Ooh. But I'm not gonna be mad at you because I want you to live. I want you to rock. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not being fake or phony about it because this is something I had to learn within myself. Like, because I would put people before me. It does you know look like that. I would put people before me because deep down, I don't give a fuck in a, in a way where it's like, I, I can't, I, it's hard for me to explain, man. Like, I would no, be I the same, I'd be the same way if I had a hundred million dollars. Dead serious. Mm. And and dudes that know me know it. No even say He'd be like, yo, I thought I had to go back to left right to do this album. He said, all I had to do was bring trash to Miami because he knows I've come with a certain energy. Man, my shit is organic. I love my shit. Mm-hmm. I eat that. That's why that shit don't hurt me as much like that no more. Cause I'm like, yo, I know what the fuck I am, yo. I'm not getting on my knees. I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna maintain. And I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm for the for like the first time in my life. I'm actually good with that. I'm not saying I'm content where I'm at. I want more. I deserve more. And I'm gonna mm-hmm. take more. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take more. You know what I'm saying? As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yeah. But I'm content with what I am. Like, I got to look in the mirror and be like, yo, I don't, I don't see no lie to myself. Like, I don't have to lie to myself. So I'm good with that. You know what I mean? So in terms of that beef or whatever, when you really narrow it down, it came down to energy, egos, and pride. And, you know, this shit is a deep game, man. It's a deep game. You got to understand most of dudes be pawns, man. You know? And if you're movable and and, and you're easy to influence, you know. This shit is deep, man. You have dudes getting this, uh, getting a dude's ear because they know they got to get you out the cipher. Because mm-hmm. when they see you, it's like, yo, oh, this nigga feel like this nigga looking through me, and he might pop on me. Mm-hmm. I gotta get him out the way. I gotta get him out of the way because I can influence this more. You know what I'm saying? So it be little shit. It's ill. Not even on no paranoid shit. I'm just telling you the artifacts of what it is. So no, that's true. Two. And then with people having their own, you know, differences of opinion and ego, shenanigans and more. It's like, look at Malcolm X in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Poison that's around and whispering in the air. You know what I'm saying? The kanas. Yo, he said that. Uh, you know what I mean? You start you start eating that shit and believing certain shit. And the division grows wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider. wider. But I know for a fact it always come back, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Shit come back to be sixty, man, because it's official. You know what I mean? Like it's official. When it's official, it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. You know what I mean? I feel as an as an exec, you got any new artists you working with? Yeah, yeah, right now though, I'm I'm doing some different things. Um I'm actually going to um I'm going to Ruckus the twenty second and doing a lecture on hip hop and philosophy. And I'm mm-hmm. about to start uh I'm about to start merging a professor I'm dealing with and working with and um, kind of like liaisoning him into the hip-hop community. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all I can say on that. But, um, of course, I got on the chat. We just did a... 
We just did special 38 special yesterday. My guy in the interview, nice joint. And I'm in the studio, the lad. Mike's right here. I stay in the lab. You know what I'm saying? I was in there all day going there. I'm tired of But I'm good. So who sum up? You know, what's your top five, man? We gotta ask that, get that on record, man. If you even have one. I don't have a top five. That'd be discrediting all the artists who contributed to this culture that I love, yo. Different dudes made different songs at different times to evoke different emotions in me, man. Like, I'll mm. never, I'll never, like, <laughs> you can't, I don't do that. I love it. I love this shit saved my life, man. Fuck mm. that. I'm not doing that. Who the fuck made that shit anyway? Yo, who's the top five? You got a top down. I don't know, but people are into it. People are into it. Everybody's into it. I understand. I understand. I, I guess it's a debate. They only into it. They only into it because it's been imposed on them to be into it. Let's let's mm. get them into something different too. Ooh, all right. So, what's your, some of your favorite experiences in the studio with some of the, some of your artists and people you worked with? Most memorable yeah, one, experiences. One of my favorite experiences was when I met Big Pun. Rest in peace. Mm. Because he was recording in Unique Studio, and uh, yeah, we was in Unique Studio, and I had been in the studio two months. On my album. Now, mind you, the War Report just dropped. So, you know, we was in the studio every day on the War Report. So, mm -hmm. basically, like, I was in the studio for like a year. So, I was like, yo, I need to get the fuck out of here and go do something. I need to go to the club or something, get a drink and look at some things. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, yo, Cheetah's up the block. Let's get on the hop. So, we go and we go to Cheetah's. So, we woke up in there and shit, me, Ching Bing, a couple other dudes as well. And so, we see Pun. So Pun is like, yo, and this at the time when Pun is like on his, you know, he's on his, he on his apex and shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, what's up? So he's like, he started rhyming. And he's like, I have the mind of a sick psychiatric total. He's rhyming my first record. Mm -hmm. so was, you know, I was like, yo, what up? He's like, nah, nah, let me finish. <laughs> I had to let him do the whole song. He said the whole song, word for word, without a mistake. Mm -hmm. So now, I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, matter of fact, now mind you, I just left the studio. I still have the studio I'm session going. Mm -hmm. so I was like, yo, the fuck, let me test his aim. I was like, yo, I got a session right now. What's up? He was like, let's go. Mm -hmm. so he, grabbed, he grabbed two girls and I was like, nah, 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 don't do that shit. I was like, I, I was like, come on. So we went to the studio. He brought like, <laughs> like I brought like twenty chicks with him. And I was like, yo, you got to get some of them out of here. Like, they was wilding. And he's drinking. He's bent. And, yo, he gets in, like, a chair. You know, the I got a chair like that, right? The fucking uh, swivel chairs with the air pressure. So he gets in the chair. And, yo, he, first of all, he breaks the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I love bro. My bro. That's, that's my bro. He breaks the chair. Then he throws it out. And then he slumps over in the chair, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this shit went south quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, get me and Cuban, love Cuban too. Get me and Cuban goes, yo, get the fuck. Now nah, he's like, uh, he saw my face, and I'm like, oh. he's like, yo, I got you, I got you. I'm like, I've seen this shit before, man. I know these, I know these motions. So he's like, yo, get up, twin, get up. So he's like, uh, so I'm like, how the fuck is he going to get up one? And if he did get up, how the fuck is this big dude going to rhyme like that? Because I always wonder, how the fuck he rhyme like that? Because mm -hmm. I was out of breath. And he was like two times my size. Mm -hmm. So Cuban hits him again. He said, yo, turn the beat. Turn the beat back on. Yo, your man jumps up and runs in the booth. He gets right on the mic. The beat play like one, two bars, and he goes in. So He's rhyming four balls, then it'll stop. Tell the engineer to bring it back. Another four balls, then it'll stop. But he matched the same cadence every time. And I was like, mm. Mm. that's his science right there. I want to use that. Because I was old school. I was, I was used to, like, rhyming and doing it all the way through. Use the technology. Breathe. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's just but to me, that was cheating. Like, I was so, like, that's cheating. I'm not doing that. I got to keep mm -hmm. going but I was playing, I'm like, yo, this, that's how he does it. And it's not easy to come back on the same line and match the same cadence, energy, and time. Same energy. 
But if you had, you, did, you couldn't tell it, he stopped. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was genius, and I thought it was comical how he fell the fuck out. And That's I a beautiful was, story. I love you, yeah, Crazy. What, what about, how did L.A., L.A. come about, man? I can't forget that with all the shit going on. I mean, yo, come on, like, they to do that. Like, it was funny because I spoke to dads the other day. You go people snoop to and all that, but you know, dudes is getting a little disrespectful, man. Like, you know, we respect, you know, over there, though, we're getting a little too disrespectful. You mm -hmm. can't just, you can't allow it. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. no. You want to have this culture if we ain't spearheaded off. Now, don't get me wrong, y'all definitely creating our own lane respectfully. But come on, Dip, you're not going to do that, Dip. You're not coming mm -hmm. over. Not from not from what I come from. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I come from a town where everybody's a wolf. Mm -hmm. You couldn't come outside without being a wolf. Shout everybody. out to the real. It's all the time. You mm -hmm. everybody. You couldn't come outside with a bike. You couldn't have a pretty sister if you wasn't a wolf. Where I come from, because you're gonna get violated. Mm -hmm. Who's ain't gonna respect that space? So therefore, within the hip hop, come on, this is us. us. Like. You can't do that. I don't know what's in your mind about, I don't know what New York dudes went over there, what type of impression you got, but nah. So mm. that, that had to be, uh, that had to be answered, and it had to be answered swiftly. You know what I'm saying? So glad yeah. y'all With all the shit that was going through, y'all ever went to blows with anybody? Nah, man. I mean, I right, really. Any yeah. other crews, even with each other? Nah, son. Never happened. Certain dudes, certain dudes is like. Cousin, you got something? Huh? Uh, no, I was like, no, keep going. Okay. What's it? I'm, I'm, I want to fast forward to now because you say you're in the studio now. Let let us know what's the new music, where it's at, um, all of that. Right, right now, I have a I have an album out called Immortal Titans. Um, with me and producer named BP, amazing producer. And we still got that. His shit is raw. Like, I love his shit. I got a joint out called Dog Seat. The whole project is out, but it's certain joints in there that I just got a ill connection with, like Dog Caesar um, and um, Red Breed. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But that's 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 um, Immortal Titans. It's a collabor collaboration out with BP and I. He's a producer. And, you know, we just going in, no features and shit. And actually, what I'm recording now is the next release, which is called All Report 2. Okay. And, what happened? Nah, I said, okay, that's oh, fine. I was saying something. Um, All Report 2, and that's she just on there. Uh, uh, I, don't got, I don't got a lot of features. I'm getting on some shit like I, I want to just hold my own. Like, I want to bring it to the point where it's like, yo, I'm dudes dropping two bars, I want uh, two uh, verses. I want to chop three. Like oh, 12s or 16s? Um, straight 16s. Yeah, so there, I got all reports too, man. Like, like I said, not a lot of features. She was on there. Havoc did most of the production on there, but um, he's rhyming on some joint. He, we got some shit. 38 specials on there. Nature. Um, uh, and that's about it. That's all I really the fuck with, wanted to fuck with. You know what I mean? So I feel good about that shit. We, we love that, man. We love it. Oh, well. So who you like right now as far as like the young boys that's out like I'm yo, I'm I'm special at the crib yesterday. Like we came to shut it down. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, we came to shut it down. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, we came to shut it down. Nah, I don't need no help.